Today we will be discussing arthroscopic superior capsular reconstruction in an irreparable rotator cuff tear that actually had previous surgeries that have failed. Here is a positioning of a patient in a left lateral decubitus with traction on the arm at 60 degrees. Posteriorly, we will insufflate the joint with lactated ringers, allowing us to find the glenohumeral joint and then make the posterior portal and entering with a standard four millimeter shoulder arthroscope. Looking from the posterior portal, we immediately see a great deal of synovitis and the previous sutures from the failed repairs. We will now uh, debride aggressively so that we can identify the superior glenoid. Direct lateral portal is made here, and we will begin to debride the greater tuberosity in preparation for the attachment of the most lateral aspect of the uh, dermal allograft, which we'll use to reconstruct the superior capsule. You will see multiple sutures being removed as we wanted to delineate the area of good subchondral bone where we will be inserting the anchors, essentially avoiding the locations of previous anchors for the failed cuff repair. It should be noted that the SCR is an indicated procedure when the patient does not have arthritic changes yet has an, an irreparable rotator cuff lesion. We see there the anchor being removed and we will have to place the anchors more laterally. And this patient was uh, too young and active to go immediately to a reverse shoulder replacement. This is essentially a salvage procedure. We are now preparing for the anchor placement. Here we place the uh, guide wire where we will over drill and that will be for the placement of the 3.9 millimeter biocomposite knotless corkscrews that will go in the superior uh, glenoid rim uh, or more so the neck in preparation for the attachment of the most medial aspect of the dermal graft. Now we are preparing for the more posterior glenoid corkscrew anchor. And we are ensuring that the anchors are placed far enough from each other, but in good quality bone at the superior glenoid. This is why there is importance to debride the superior glenoid so that you can visualize where the anchors are being placed. So essentially there is a uh, guide wire inside a cannula. We're now drilling the hole for the more posterior glenoid anchor. And at this point, the anchor is uh, being inserted. This will include shuttling stitch that will be used uh, to uh, shuttle suture through the dermal uh, graft on uh, the most medial port. Now we will be inserting the uh, swivel lock anchors, which will go into the juncture of the articular surface and the greater tuberosity. This is essentially the medial row of the two rows that will uh, be going on the greater tuberosity. In this particular patient, it was uh, challenging because of the previous anchors, and we had to ensure that we had uh, a good real estate here in order to uh, gain purchase uh, of the anchor. This is the uh, top that's inserted up to the wider portion. So now we will locate that previously drilled hole and um, again, being careful to avoid the cavity, which is more lateral from a previous anchor uh, prior surgery. This is done through a more superior uh, lateral portal. And as we uh, turn the uh, swivel lock anchor, we can determine at that point if there is sufficient purchase in bone. That anchor sufficed. In this one, we went a bit more posterior than we usually would for that same reason, uh, in order to ensure there is good quality bone. We see fat droplets uh, emanating here, and uh, we can tell that uh, this should have a good purchase for the second swivel lock anchor. This is a 4.75 anchor using fiber tapes. 
That type of suture will have uh, more strength so that it doesn't pull, uh, pull through the tissue. Important to ensure that you are tapping down the anchor in the same uh, trajectory as your initial tap. Now, once we screw those anchors in, we'll have to deliver the sutures externally. And at this point, we add the uh, special uh, lateral rubber cannula, which uh, we'll be using throughout the procedure. In order to assist with suture management, uh, we use this inserter that essentially separates the region into four quadrants so that we ensure that the uh, posterior sutures go in that direction. At this point, we're now retrieving the shuttling stitch from the knotless corkscrew anchor that's in the superior glenoid. And the first one will be brought through the more anterior medial quadrant. Now we're going for the second shuttling stitch. Again, it's important to uh, keep the sutures well organized as the latter part of the procedure will depend completely up upon this. Now we're bringing the fiber wire tape sutures out the more lateral quadrant. This one's posterior. So that device, as you see there, separates into four quadrants. We now will take the dermal allograph, which is a special graft in particular for this surgery. This is actually taken from the uh, lumbar area in a human donor. And we can either measure the graft intraarticularly, but because of the size of the patient and prior experience, we have a, a set a dimension that we will mark out on the graft and now cut it. This is cut on a back table on top of uh, multiple towels because the uh, graft is quite thick. We will now on the lateral side make uh, uh, entry holes, which uh, later will pass the suture through. This is for the tuberosity side. We are now grabbing the sutures from the glenoid uh, anchors. This is the uh, shuttling uh, suture that will be then passed through the most medial aspect of the dermal graft. And we do this in a manner so that it will be essentially a mattress stitch. So it needs to be passed in two different directions. So that is for the anterior glenoid. And we will now be uh, retrieving uh, that, that shuttle stitch so that we can pull it through the graft. As mentioned, the suture management here is critical. So we are loading the, uh, the loop on the shuttling stitch, which we will now be uh, pulling, as you're seeing from uh, the most uh, medial portal there, as we pull. And at this point, there's uh, always a bit of resistance because the suture is being uh, passed through. And there we grab the loop, which will diminish the resistance, and it's important to uh, maintain the right tension. The same will be done now for the more uh, posterior of the two uh, anchors uh, in the glenoid, and the same process uh, will be repeated. We will use that suture passer again in two different directions. So in order to create essentially a horizontal mattress uh, stitch. So we will go now through the more medial posterior quadrant and again, grab the shuttling stitch. The uh, suture from the dermal allograft is then uh, placed through the loop. And now we will pull that through. 
and this will uh, essentially secure the medial aspect of the construct um, so that once we insert the allograft for the superior capsular reconstruction, we will be pulling on those sutures and anchoring them uh, down. The sutures from the medial row on the tuberosity are now passed through the holes that we previously made, again, ensuring that we have the correct quadrant so that we are maintaining the sutures in the, in the appropriate uh, orientation. You can see clearly here that the sutures are well organized and that really requires uh, working as a team in the operating room to achieve that. Once we've done that, we can now remove the device that goes within the cannula that was separating the entryway into the four quadrants. And now we will grab the dermal allograft. Uh, this is done with a heavy needle holder and we will fold it, I say like a New York hot dog, and pass it uh, manually through that portal, pulling on the sutures to maintain tension. So you see there, that's the most medial aspect uh, of that allograft. And we are, we are taking up the slack with the sutures and then bringing it down to the superior glenoid rim. As we pull on these sutures, they uh, will tighten. So there's no need to uh, tie knots here, which will be uh, challenging in this particular scenario. Now we can also use a, um, a knot pusher to ensure that the graft is sitting on the superior glenoid and we've taken out the uh, slack. We now move to creating the hole for the, the punch, which will be for the lateral row of the anchors in the tuberosity. Again, this was uh, more challenging in this particular patient due to the uh, previous anchors. So these uh, sutures will be crossed from the medial row. And uh, you can see there's two different color sutures because uh, they are uh, being crossed, which will uh, give uh, additional strength to the uh, fixation of that graft. So we will soon see the lateral graft being brought down to the tuberosity. And again, we're, we're quite lateral here. You can see fat droplets and the graft is inserted with good tension. We'll spin back the inserter and ensure there's, there's a good purchase before we cut the sutures. So now we will retrieve the, uh, the suture from a more posterior portion of the, of the tuberosity and load it onto the uh, anchor. This will be the more uh, posterior anchor, again, quite lateral on the tuberosity due to the bone uh, quality and previous surgery. Once the tap is removed, we localize that hole, and then as we're bringing it down, we will now pull uh, tightly on the sutures and insert the anchor. This will essentially uh, serve as a, uh, as a check rein for superior migration of the humeral head, which is what we are trying to avoid, to give a lever arm uh, for the deltoid to function and also to prevent superior humeral head migration and development of, of post-traumatic arthropathy. We are now cutting the sutures from the superior glenoid rim, and you can see that the, uh, the graft is quite tight. In order to give that improved coverage, we, we can now take the remnant of the cuff. In this case, a small portion of the infraspinatus was remaining and we are passing suture tape through the posterior margin of the uh, dermal uh, allograft. And now grabbing a portion of the, uh, the remaining portion of the infraspinatus. We are using a, a Duncan loop here, a type of uh, arthroscopic stitch. 
and passing it through the loop. And this will be a sliding knot. We use a knot pusher here and we'll push that knot down, uh, basically bringing the uh, dermal allograft towards the infraspinatus posteriorly and helping to close that gap. We should get ingrowth to the margins of this graft, so this uh, particular step is important. Uh, we'll now uh, lock that. This will further uh, strengthen the construct and provide for uh, essentially complete uh, coverage of the interval between the glenoid there, and you can see it's quite taut, and the grade tuberosity there. So this will again prevent superior migration of the humeral head. You can see there, this is uh, tight like a drum. That is what we uh, want to achieve. And we will then uh, close the portals. This is the uh, posterior portal. Those were superior micro portals used to simply insert the medial row of the uh, swivel lock anchors. The lateral portal is a bit larger because of the working cannula to pass the graft. This is absorbable sutures that we tend to use in our arthroscopies. There's really no need to remove sutures. Uh, patients appreciate that and it's a good time saver. This is a, uh, a 3-0 micro type suture. We also will now inject a mixed connective tissue allograft that will be done at the juncture between the uh, dermal allograft and the grade tuberosity, followed by uh, platelet-rich plasma, which we took from the patient's blood when his IV was inserted in the holding area. Sterile dressings are placed over zero form. Bulky dressing uh, will be applied and the patient will be placed into a sling. We uh, tend to use a sling with an abduction pillow for patient comfort and also to minimize the tension on the uh, SCR graft. It's important that this patient be protected without motion, either passive or certainly active, for approximately five to even six week period in order to allow for that graft to heal properly and again, avoid migration at the head. At that point, we'll begin therapy. This is all done in order to try to create a biologic healing environment to allow for healing uh, of this uh, dermal allograft. This is an excellent alternative to trying to reconstruct a rotator cuff, which is essentially not present, and uh, perhaps will stave off uh, the need for reverse shoulder arthroplasty in the future. Thank you for your attention.